The effectiveness of cyber and information warfare can't be denied. Therefore, it's surprising more people aren't talking about the story of one extremely lethal hacking group. The interesting part is, just a decade ago, they were considered an absolute joke, and they've risen to be arguably the best in the whole world, to the point where we should all be extremely worried. Earlier this year, this hacking group pulled off one of the biggest internet heists in history, stealing $600 million. And the crazy part is, this hacking group is state-sponsored. It's the Lazarus Group from North Korea, and they're the only hacking group in the world who actually steals money to fund government programs, specifically their nuclear missile program. Let's turn back the clock though. Before stealing half a billion dollars, North Korean hackers, well, they were almost a meme. They first came into the spotlight when a movie, The Interview, was about to be released. This was a comedy with James Franco about assassinating the leader of North Korea. Naturally, the Hermit Kingdom was not happy about this at all. And they took immediate action against Sony, the company releasing the movie with a brazen cyber attack known as the Sony Pictures hack. Lazarus, which at the time went by a different name, got full root access to Sony's servers, including emails and unreleased confidential files that they would steal and disseminate on the internet. Now this hack exposed a handful of things that were not a great look for Sony, including Sony's lobbying on the US government to block piracy website IP addresses, a pretty big story which was reposted on WikiLeaks. There were also four movies released for free online and some embarrassing emails from executives trash-talking Angelina Jolie. But outside of that, this was nothing more than a minor speed bump for Sony, where North Korea had to escalate further to actually do some damage, and that's exactly what they did. They made some serious terrorism threats on theaters, saying, it would be like 9-11 for anyone who attended a premiere of the interview movie. Initially, this did scare Sony, and they pulled the picture from theaters. But US President at the time, Obama, stepped in and called North Korea's bluff, saying that they would not respond to terrorists, and he worked with Sony to still get the movie released. And it did get released. We cannot have a society in which some dictator someplace can start imposing censorship here in the United States. And guess what? There was no terrorist attack. Now here's the funny part. Unfortunately, this whole incident led to way more PR for the movie. Now everyone wanted to see this banned film that North Korea was freaking out about because it was all over the news. So hacking Sony servers, North Korea more or less got nothing, and they got their bluff called and led to way more people seeing the movie than would have otherwise. But their exploits have been getting much and much better, where people aren't laughing anymore. Several years later, North Korean hackers, which started going by Lazarus, which is a biblical figure that operates the ferry into the underworld, well, Lazarus brought the England medical system to its knees in 2017 with the WannaCry hack. This was a phishing attack, which is a hack delivered via emails that tricks the recipient into opening attachments. Once the attachment is open, malware is released onto a system. WannaCry was then ransomware, meaning it encrypted all the files on your computer, effectively locking them until you can unlock them with a key. But of course, before they unlock it, they needed the ransom, which in this case was a Bitcoin payment that would give access back to all the files. And if you need these files, well, you don't really have a choice. The WannaCry hack infected 70,000 individual devices from computers to MRI scanners, blood storage refrigerators, and to release control of the systems, they wanted 92 million pounds from the UK, which they did get. Though most effective in the UK, WannaCry wasn't limited to there. In just 24 hours, it infected 230,000 computers in 150 countries. In total, 40% of healthcare organizations and 60% of manufacturing organizations were in some capacity affected by WannaCry, with the total damage of the hack being equal to the value of 7 billion. So WannaCry was a massive step up from the Sony Pictures hack, but it wasn't until this year where things finally started to get very, very scary. Because Lazarus was able to pull off the biggest internet heist in history, the Ronin Bridge exploit. This exploit, they stole 600 million from a blockchain network connected to the pay to earn Axie Infinity game, Bloomberg reported. They got control of the private validator keys and drained 173,600 Ethereum and 25.5 million USD coin. Now, not to get too deep into crypto world here, but they pulled this from the Ronin Bridge, which is an Ethereum side chain specifically built for this Axie Infinity game, which is the largest crypto game. They were able to gain this access within mere minutes. 
and they started siphoning the money way into an account which was unlikely to ever be recovered. Craziest part is, as fast as they were able to get access, no one even noticed for six full days, which quote, screams aloud that some structure should be put in place to watch illicit transfers more closely, said Wilfred Day head of Securitized Capital. So if you're counting, the 600 million was almost 10 times bigger than the 2017 WannaCry hack. And that 600 million, well, not a lot compared to, let's say what the US is spending, that's still an amount of money you probably don't want a rogue nation spending on weapons. Now, other than their high profile hacks, we don't know too much about Lazarus, other than the fact that there's around 7,000 full-time hackers in North Korea. And they're working around the clock on future attacks, which could appear any day in the form of more ransomware, crypto protocol hacks, and additional types of cyber attacks. There's also a high chance they're affecting the flow of information and public sentiment with things like Twitter bots fighting a propaganda war in many ways we might not fully understand. All this being said, while the future is uncertain, there's a very good chance that their biggest heists are still ahead. But now at least you know about Lazarus, so just make sure you have a long enough password, two-factor authentication on, and you hit subscribe. See you in the next video for more tech stories.